Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Barbarossa Army Group Center 1941. This is a game designed by Vance von Voorhees and is published by GMT Games. This is the first reprint of hopefully the rest of the reprints coming soon from the East Front series, the EFS, and uh, everybody's been waiting for this for a long time. It's been out of print for a while and now finally it is back in print, making every East Front fan a lot more happy. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. June 1941. Army Group Center hurls itself through the Soviet border defenses and its two panzer groups race headlong towards Minsk. Behind them lie the remnants of the Soviet Western Front, almost a million men in four armies. The Soviets are stunned by the German Blitzkrieg. Their responses are slow, confused, and governed by pre-war contingency plans made obsolete by the speed of the German advance. In little more than a week, the German Panzer spearheads meet east of Minsk. Though isolated units continue to fight, the entire Soviet Western Front has ceased to exist. The Germans' next target is Smolensk, but the Soviets resist more effectively. Entire armies are dispatched from other parts of the Soviet Union as the true scope of the Minsk pocket disaster and the magnitude of the German threat become known. Soviet counterattacks, especially around Lepel, are thrown back with horrific losses. Once again, the panzer groups charge eastward, creating yet another huge Soviet pocket west of Smolensk. The Soviets resist savagely. Smolensk falls on July 13th, but the pocket does not close. Many Soviet units escape to fight another day. Hitler now makes a fateful decision and overrides his generals. Over half of Army Group Center's panzer and air formations are diverted south to take Kiev or north to isolate Leningrad. No longer under heavy pressure, the Soviets gained time to form solid fronts around Vyazma and Bryansk. Did Hitler's decision cost the Germans the war? Play Army Group Center and find out for yourself. And we have an example of the counters here, as well as the game contents. We get 1400 half-inch counters, four 22 by 34 inch maps, one 25 and a half by 11 inch map, and eight scenarios, including an introductory scenario tutorial. The time scale is two days per turn, five miles per hex, for one to four players, ages 14 and up, the ground unit scale are division and regiments, and the air unit scale is 40 to 70 aircraft per counter. The complexity is rated high at 7, and the solitaire suitability is also high at 7 as well. And at the top, you'll see the uh, maps that are all laid out. These are from the published games, and this is going to give you maps for Army Group Center, Typhoon, Army Group North, Kiev to Rostov, Army Group South, and Crimea, so that way you get the entire series, the entire scope of the East Front here with those games. So let's take a look inside and see what we get. Got our D10, rule book, playbook, player aid cards, and there are a bunch. Counter sheets. And our maps. So let's set up the maps and take a closer look at the game. And we'll take a look at the maps that come with the game. I wanted to show you the configurations so that way you can get a better sense as to what the sizes are. This is map D and map C. This is going to be used in, I think, three scenarios in the game, and this is the way they're going to be laid out. So everybody knows this is a big game as far as not just counter count, but maps. You will use all of the maps in only one scenario, and that will save you. That's the big giant scenario, obviously, and you, if you are going to play that, you're going to probably play that at a convention uh, because you're going to need the time and obviously the space. But this should be manageable on most tables. This is uh, about 42 inches long and 35 inches wide. So that way you get an idea of seeing it on the table that, yeah, it's going to take up space, but it's not going to be as unmanageable as you may think when you first look at the game itself. But this is going to be for uh, C&D, and this is going to be really centered around Poland, East Poland, Germany, Lithuania, and I think we've got Belarus over there as well, and Latvia at the top. So that is the area of operations you're going to see here. And graphics are beautiful. Really love the look of the map. And it's going to be half-inch counter, so the hexes are small. It's going to be pretty dense when you get this uh, game on the table.
And we continue on with maps H and I. Both of these maps will be used in individual scenarios where you're only using map H or map I, but then there is one scenario where they're joined together like this, and they get a little further extended with this WA map. So that's going to add about another foot to the space you'll need on the table, just so you can see. Uh, this will just extend out the map a little bit more. So keep in mind when you're setting up your table for the scenarios that you use these maps that you're going to need a little bit more space than you'll need with just these two maps or the first two maps. But as I said, beautifully done maps. These are going to look fantastic on a table and they're going to be really dense with counters. It's going to be a great sight to behold. And we'll take a look at the many player aids that come with the game, starting off here with the turn record track. Then we have the Army Group Center Step Reduction Organization card. Next, we have the German Player Mat, giving you the Barbarossa Victory Point track, Axis Loss Replacement track, the Axis Air Unit Status track, then the Rebuilding track with Active Box, Cadre Box, Eliminated Box, and the Cannot Rebuild Box, Flown, Damaged, and Destroyed Boxes on the right-hand side. And we have the Procedure Notes at the bottom, including a Rules Reference if you need to look it up. Then we have the same for the Soviet player. Next, we have the Soviet Setup Card 3. This is your Special Reinforcement Pool Groups. And on the back, we have the Setup for Scenario 5, Good Area and Drive South. On the next sheet, we have Scenario Card 1, which is for the Battle of Borisov. This is a learning scenario, and you can see the counter density is very low. On the back, we have the Axis Super Heavy Artillery Effects Table and its associated DRMs. Next, we get to the foldouts. This is the expanded sequence of play. On the front, we have the strategic segment all listed out for you. And on the inside, we get the Axis player segment listed out for you, and then the Soviet player segment listed out for you. And on the back, we have the continuation of the Soviet phase, as well as the administrative segment. The next foldout we have is chart and table card number one. On the front, we have the terrain effects chart, giving you a graphical example of all the different types of terrain, the title of the terrain, and then the effects on movement for dry, mud, frost, snow, and frozen, and then the combat and other effects notes, as well as defender orders on the right-hand side. And the tables continue on the inside with the retreat table, Soviet surrender, combined arms bonus, armor attrition, overrun, air initiative, AA fire, air combat, and the interdiction effects on enemy units, as well as Soviet headquarters. And on the back, we finish out with the combat results table, combat effects beneficial to the attacker, and combat effects beneficial to the defender. Then we have chart and table card number two. On the front, we have the unit type symbols, unit type box colors, unit colors, and these sample information markers for you to reference during the game. And on the inside, we have the movement phase chart, movement allowance conversion chart, and the effects on movement chart, as well as attacker and defender artillery support, and non-op HQ effects, as well as the non-op HQ recovery die roll. And on the back, we finish out with how to read the units, giving you examples of the different types of units in the game and how to read those counters. And for the last foldout, we have chart and table card number three, giving us the Axis Attack Supply, Soviet Attack Supply, the Axis Railroad Conversion Rates, the Axis Victory Plan Table, Axis Required Occupation, and the Victory Conditions Chart on the front. And on the inside, we have charts for Scenarios 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8, including the Victory Point Schedule, the events occurring within the scenario, Victory Points for Steps HQs removed within the scenarios, and then at the end, we have the Axis Exit Table. And then we finished the last foldout with the Soviet Replacements Table, Limited Artillery Supply Table, Moscow Air Bombardment Table, Axis Fuel Shortage Table, and the Bridge Repair Table. Next, we have Map Card 1 Front, which is for Scenario 3, Lepel Offensive Operation. And on the back, we have Scenario Number 6, the Yelnia Dukovshina Offensive Operation. Next, we have Soviet Setup Card 2. This is used in Scenario 8, the Campaign. Then we have Game Card 1, which is for Scenario 3, Lepil Offensive Operation. And at the bottom, we have Scenario 6, the Yelnia Dukovshina Offensive Operation. Next, we have Soviet Setup Card 1. At the top, we have the Setup for Scenario 2, the Minsk Pocket. And at the bottom, Scenario 8, the Campaign. 
On the back, we have the setup for Scenario 4, Smolensk Pocket, and at the bottom, Scenario 7, Thunder on the Dnieper. Then we move on to the Axis setup cards, card number 1, Scenario 2, Minsk Pocket, and Scenario 8, The Campaign. And on the back, we have the setup for Scenario 7, Thunder on the Dnieper, which is also used for Scenario 4, Smolensk Pocket. And lastly, we have the Axis Setup Card 2. On the front, we get the Scenario 8 Campaign Reinforcements. Below that, we have Scenario 4, Smolensk Pocket. And this is also used for Scenario 7, Thunder on the Dnieper. Next, we'll take a look at the counter sheets that come with the game. Starting off on sheet number 1, we have German Forces. And the three numbers at the bottom are the Standard Attack, Defense, and Movement Point Allowance. Counter sheet number two, we finish out the German forces with the Luftwaffe and regular ground forces. On the right-hand side, we start off with the Soviet Air Force and some administrative counters at the bottom right. Counter sheet number three, we have the Soviet forces. Sheet number four is a continuation of the Soviet forces as well as some administrative counters in the bottom right. And then on the last sheet, we have the remaining administrative counters for use in the game. Next, we'll take a look at the rules that come with the game. This is a 64-page full-color rulebook. On the front page, we have the table of contents, listing out all the sections and the associated page numbers. We start off with the introduction, get into the game components, and there's a lot of stuff with the game components because you have different nationalities, different unit types, and all of the information on the counters is going to mean different things. So you're going to need to read that. You also remember we saw that on the player aids as well, so you're going to have more than one place where you can get that information from. Ground unit size symbols and the ground unit type symbols. This is something that people have asked about in the past uh, that are just new to wargaming. What is it that uh, I need to read to understand the different unit types? These are the types of things that are usually listed out in rule books. And if not, you can find that online. So it'll help you understand the different unit sizes as well as the different symbols and their meanings. Then we have player aid markers, player aid cards, the dice. And on page six, we get to basic concepts. Gives you a breakdown of terminology, zones of control, stacking, having and rounding unit steps, things that most war gamers are going to be already familiar with. Then we get to starting the game on page seven. It's going to have you set up the game and then get into the sequence of play. Then we have the weather phase, supply, all the different phases broken down for you here. You've got these call out boxes that are giving you notes that are going to explain to you different concepts in the game. Access fuel shortage, access space units, replacements, how you rebuild your units, Soviet replacement types, special Soviet replacement types, Soviet ZAP units, Soviet special events, access replacements, type 5 aircraft, type A, spinning type A and I replacements, Soviet reservists, and then we get into reinforcements and all the steps with reinforcements. And then we have a design note here. This is a different call out. The other ones are green, this one's brown. It says design note, even if the aircraft have been destroyed, the ground crews are still available to redeploy. Continue on with movement, zones of control and weather effects on movement, terrain effects on movement, a lot of movement information here. Road movement during non-dry weather, rivers, non-bridge river hex sides. Then we get into specialized movement, railroad movement, railroad capacity. Railroads are huge. They were huge on the east front at moving troops back and forth. Overrun, another design note here, as well as another note, a general note. Overrun markers. And we have pre-combat actions, attack declaration, which units can attack, hexes eligible to be attacked, and hexes that are not eligible. Multiple hex attacks, minimum combat odds, Soviet mandated attacks, reaction movement, order markers. Then we get into artillery. Special Situations, Axis Allied Artillery, Rocket Artillery, Super Heavy Artillery Mode, Bombardment Results, Limited Artillery Supply, and then Air Power, Air Missions, and then Air Unit Mission Allocation, Resolving Your Air Missions, Air Combat, and Aircraft Fire Interdiction Missions, Close Air Support Missions, Air Transport Missions, a lot of air missions, Air Transport Mission Procedures, Double A interception, then we have combat phase starts on page 38. And there's going to be a lot of stuff going on with that, of course. Bunker busting, final DRM determination, totaling your strength, engineer effects, special engineer stacking, combat resolution procedure, and then your combat results. 
That'll all be explained to you here. Retreating, advancing, units unable to retreat, and then the inset map and how to use that. Fortifications, common features, fortified lines, strong points, citadels, railroad conversion, Soviet surrender, Soviet special units. We have Soviet armored trains, guards units, NKVD units, Soviet machine gun units, Soviet militia units, and then garrisons, and then other special units, engineers, bridge markers, bridge placement, ferry markers, flotillas. Then we have the Axis Regiment substitute counters. And then on page 59, we have how to win. And that carries over for the last couple pages. We have a page for notes, a blank page for notes. And on the back, you have more room for notes. And then on the last page, we have the index, so you can more easily look up the rules. And on the back, we have the game credits. And lastly, we'll take a look at the playbook. This is a 49-page full-color book. On the front cover, we have the table of contents giving you the different sections and their associated page numbers. And on the inside of the front cover, we have the introduction, which is going to give you the general setting, the game series overall, because these are independent games, Army Group North, Center, and South. You can play them individually, or you can combine them into one big game. Then you have the game equipment and the game maps. Remember when I set up the maps, I showed you the configurations. This is going to be the configurations for three scenarios, one, three, and six. Then scenario four uses map I with that smaller map, WA. Scenario five will use map H. And then scenario seven will use HI and the WA map. And then scenario eight, which is the campaign, is going to use everything. That's where you're going to need the most space. Then you have your map alignment, your map placement sequence, and then your standard rules as well as the inset map. And remember, in the playbook, you're going to have more rules here, and these will sometimes supersede the rules in the basic rule book. We have reinforcements and replacements, reinforcements, replacements, Soviet armor reorganization, Soviet militia division, Soviet guard unit creation, and axis required occupation special movement, invasion preparedness, and then we have some optional rules on page 7. Then we have map exit, army group boundaries, bridge destruction and repair, optional rule, limited battlefield information, special groups and situations, Moscow air bombardment, Soviet Moscow air units, Soviet reserve air units, optional rule, Soviet air interdiction, and then special units and situations, the Axis KSRF SS groups, Soviet NKVD brigades, Soviet HQs, Soviet Coast Defense Artillery. And then we get into logistics on page 11, Axis victory plans, and then combining the games, explaining to you how you can combine all of them or maybe just two of them, and then how to set up your scenario. Then we get into the scenarios. Scenario one is the Battle of Borisov, which is the learning scenario. Low counter density, small map, a great way to just get your feet wet and understand the rules in this system. Then we have Scenario 2, the Minsk Pocket. Scenario 3, Lepil Offensive Operation. Scenario 4, Smolensk Pocket. Scenario 5, Guderian Drive South. Scenario 6, the Yelnia Dugovshina Offensive Operation. And then Scenario 7, Thunder on the Dnieper. Then we finish out with Scenario 8, the Campaign, the big one. This is going to need all the maps. You're going to need all the space and all the time to get this one set up and to play it through. Then we have detailed examples of play, which will give you multiple examples illustrated out for you and supported with text for various segments of the rules and of the game, going all the way through to turn seven at this point. And then we go to air mission examples on page 34. So we had like seven turns of examples with that illustrated example for the ground stuff. Now we get into the air missions. Then we have the designer section, which is the unit identification abbreviations for the Germans as well as the Soviets. Some historical notes here on page 40, suggested reading. And then the second edition designer summary. And then we have the counter manifest for a couple pages. And then the expanded sequence of play is at the back of the playbook, which is also on the player aids. And that finishes out on the back of the playbook. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Barbarossa, Army Group Center, 1941. This is a game designed by Vance von Boris and is published 
by GMT Games. It took a while to get here, but it's finally here. It uh, has been quite a while, actually. Hopefully, Army Group North and South reprints won't take as long as this one did. This is the most popular one, Center is, so they got that one done first. But again, hopefully North and South won't take uh, a long time to get done like this one did. But once these are printed, I would definitely recommend going and grabbing them because we don't know if or when they will ever be reprinted. These are classics. They're uh, really interesting games, detailed. A lot of room you're going to need and a lot of time if you're going to play the campaign. But you saw there are some one map scenarios, there are some two map scenarios. So it's definitely manageable on most people's tables. Obviously, for the campaign, you're going to need a giant table, but uh, that's why you have conventions for that. Unless you're lucky and you have a lot of room and a giant table that you can set it up at home and leave it up for quite a while and don't have cats or kids that'll wreck your plans as you're playing. But really happy to see this is finally done and got my copy. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you'd be curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.